Hi everyone, welcome to the Print Production Process, Module 1 from our Perfect Print Production series. Don't forget you can pause, go back or even break off and rerun the complete module at any time during this training session. So how does it all work? It all starts with three colours of light, red, green and blue. Pretty much everything that creates a digital image today, your TV, your phone, your computer monitor, your digital camera, your data projector, all use the RGB, red, green, blue, additive colour principle. It's called additive because it works by adding different amounts of red, green and blue light to get all the colours that you see on screen. And when all three colours mix together, we get white light. So your graphic designers are using the exact same RGB colour monitor image on screen when they're creating your artwork for your print job. However, in printing, we want to create an image on white paper, and try as we might, we just can't do it using light, no matter what colour it is. So we need to take that RGB artwork file and convert it into something that we can use to print on paper, with ink. Now it's of no coincidence that if you look at the three colours of light, where they overlap in equal intensity, you can see that three new colours are created. You can see the blue, the pink and the yellow. These then form the first three colours of our standard set of printing inks, which we use on the printing press to create the illusion, and it is just an illusion of your original RGB screen image. But in print, on paper, on plastic, on foil, on pretty much any other surface that you can possibly imagine. Just like the RGB colour principle was called additive, this time the printing colour principle is known as subtractive, because this time we make all the different colours we need by taking away the colours we don't want. So this time, each ink absorbs or subtracts, or if you like, just simply takes away light of all colours except for its own. For example, the cyan ink absorbs all colours apart from cyan, and so on. So in printing, the three main primary colours are blue, called cyan, pink, called magenta, and yellow, called, well, yellow. Out of these three colours of ink, we can create a pretty good illusion of a colour picture image on paper. But there's still something missing. Black. Black for text, black for line work, and black in the images for shadow and tone. But hang on, because if you remember, we're now working with a subtractive colour model. So this time, when cyan, magenta and yellow inks are printed at 100% on white paper, you get black. Or do you? In actual fact, what you really get is a dark, muddy sort of brown. Not really a true black at all. And it's because of that that we have to add black ink as the fourth colour in the standard set of printing inks to achieve a really great printed image. So now we have our four colours of printing ink with which to create the illusion of our colour photographic image. And by the way, if you're wondering why the black is called K, it's a historical reference to the days when the industry used film in the print production process, and each colour, that's the cyan, the magenta and the yellow, were registered and aligned to the black image known as the key, K-E-Y. But hang on a minute, if you remember, I did say earlier that your graphic designers are mostly creating your artwork for your job, working and viewing a screen image in RGB. So where does our CMYK print file come from? Well, the RGB file is converted to a CMYK file through a process called colour separation. The colour separation is a digital function performed by either the graphic designer or the print supplier. But the end result gives you the four individual colour components which will interact with each other as dots on the printed page to create a truly amazing illusion of the original image. So now that we have the tools for the job, how does the illusion on the paper actually take place? How does the printing process trick us into believing that we're actually looking at a photograph? And the answer is, with a whole load of dots. I remember first looking at how the whole process worked at school, with a magnifying glass and a black and white newspaper. We looked at a picture in the newspaper with the magnifying glass and saw how in close-up it actually was just a whole load of dots. The original photograph, however, we were told, was a continuous tone image, which if you looked at it with a magnifying glass, didn't have any dots in it at all. Unfortunately, commercially, we can't print in continuous tone in the same way that a photograph is produced, mainly for reasons of cost and practicality. 
So the printed image we were looking at in the newspaper had therefore been converted into something that could be printed, known as a half-tone image. An image created by screening the original photograph into a series of dots. Looking at the printed picture with the magnifying glass, we saw that there were very small printed black dots with lots of white paper surrounding them. Optically, these smaller dots gave us a light shade of grey. And where we could see larger printed black dots, now with only a very small area of white paper showing through between them, optically we got a much darker shade of grey, eventually going to black. This screening process is still the main principle that creates the illusion of pretty much every printed image we see today. So therefore, and using the same principle, to create the illusion of a colour photograph we simply use four sets of coloured dots. The cyan, the magenta, the yellow and of course the black. These four screens of dots each interact with each other on the paper to trick us into believing that we're actually looking at a photograph. Brilliant, isn't it? So, let's look at a printed colour job. This whole page is printed using the CMYK four colour process principle. And if we were to look at the colour picture with a magnifying glass, we would see the four screens of different sized dots in each of the four colours creating the illusion. So, whenever you want to print a colour picture, you will be using the four colour process. That's how the process works. So you'll need a minimum of four colours of ink on your printing press. But what about all these other colours in the job? The background, the coloured text panel, the logo. Where do these colours come from? Well, if you're lucky, and your graphic designer is on your side, all those other colours will come from the CMYK standard process set that we're using to print the photographic image. OK, so as a graphic designer, if I now wanted to choose my colours to use in the job for logos and backgrounds and other design elements, where can I go to see which colours are available to me if I'm only using CMYK for this print job? Well, if you're only using a standard four colour process CMYK ink set on your printing press, you would go to one of these, a tint chart. A tint chart shows you very visually every single colour you can achieve on the printing press if you are only using CMYK. And I have to say, the first time you look through a tint chart, the number of colours that can be achieved from mixing different percentages of CMYK on the paper is absolutely overwhelming. There are literally thousands of different colours. But then the same thing always happens. As you browse through the pages of these different colours you can choose from, you begin to notice something. You begin to ask yourself, where are the bright reds? Where are the true oranges? Where are the vibrant greens and the deep blues? Where are all the golds and silvers? And in short, where is anything nice? All these colours in the tint chart somehow seem a bit flat, dull and lifeless. And it's about now that you suddenly realise the shortcomings of the CMYK colour set. We'll cover more about colour theory in future modules, but for now we need to know that although the standard CMYK process colour set is certainly able to create a stunning illusion of a photographic image, it also has some pretty serious limitations when it comes to the full range of colours it can actually achieve. CMYK has what is known as a very small relative colour gamut, or colour range, meaning a pretty small colour palette relative to the actual visible colour gamut which we can see all around us in the natural world. And it's often the case that when we look at a CMYK printed image of, say, a car, it looks great, until you see the actual colour of the car in real life only then to realise that the colour of the printed image was actually nothing much like the real colour of the car at all. All of this, of course, is fine if we only want a great-looking picture. After all, no one will be making a colour judgement on the colour accuracy or the colour integrity of a lifestyle picture showing a happy couple sitting having coffee in a smart restaurant, for example. It is what it is. But for those who are selling products off the printed page, and particularly those products for which part of the buying decision will be based upon the colour representation, it becomes a much more serious issue. So, if CMYK offers a great looking image, but only limited colour accuracy and integrity, where do we go for all the colours that we can't seem to get from CMYK? We go to solid colours. Solid colours are tins of ink just like tins of paint. Tins of ink in the actual colours we want to match. 
These are used on the printing press in addition to, or sometimes instead of, the standard CMYK process set. You can identify if a given colour is printed as a solid colour or is actually made up of the four colours of process simply by looking at it through a printer's magnifying glass. These are also known as linen testers or a loop. Using one of these you can see if your colour is comprised of one single colour, which may lead you to believe it's a special colour, or if it is made up of one, two, three or four dots of CMYK ink, in which case it's clearly a process tint. So now we know there are two ways of achieving colour in printing. The first, with the CMYK four colour process, where the colour is made on the printed page using screened dots in different percentages for printing picture images and tints. And the second, where the colour is the pigment contained in the tin of ink itself, the most widely used and best known of which is of course Pantone. Pantone is a company who offers an international colour matching standard. And it will be true to say that the majority of brands have at some time chosen or at least specified their corporate identity colours based on Pantone as a reference. When you compare the colours shown in a Pantone book with the colours displayed in the CMYK tint chart, you very quickly realise why so many print jobs do specify solid colours in addition to the CMYK standard ink set in order to achieve brand and product colour accuracy and integrity. Pantone colours are also known as special colours to differentiate them from the standard CMYK process colours. They're also often called spot colours or special colours or sometimes fifth colours when one appears on the printing press on the fifth printing unit and after the four CMYK inks already being used. Pantone inks are bright, they're vibrant and consistent, and hugely enlarge the colour gamut available to the graphic designer. But of course, like everything in life, you get what you pay for, and of course solid colours do come with an additional cost. Your graphic designers, therefore, will always try and achieve as many colours as they can from the CMYK standard set before adding one or perhaps two additional special colours to the job, and therefore also to the cost. And there we have it. That's how the printing process works. The printing process and the industry that surrounds it is constantly developing and reinventing itself and there are many options for your print production. In our other online print modules we'll look at how to achieve absolute quality and colour accuracy for your brand and of course how to save money and work even more effectively with your print suppliers. If you have any questions about the subjects covered in this module please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you for choosing us today and good luck with all of your print productions. You've been watching a John Boardman Performance Learning Module. See you again very soon.